Would you want a sitcom of your own? Uh, possibly. It's, see, it's a lot of work, and if we're going to have a kid. So it's possible, though. We're, we're considering it. Have there ever been a thought of writing you into her script? Uh, now, uh, you know, we, I was on the show last year once. I'm going to be on it this year once, and that's, you know, they, they got a great cast. I mean, they certainly don't need anybody else. Because the hardest thing of all is to make it in stand-up, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, with all that's out there it's, and everybody it's, wanting it. But it's being, the best, It is all. the best, by it's far. It's the best. Yeah. yeah. Of course, it's orgasmic. You make yeah. someone laugh. What are you yeah. in total control? Yeah. Right? yeah. I didn't do it for three years till you know this last the mini tour. But man, you know, I I really missed it. And now, when so you did that great. mini tour, like you were in Atlantic City last week, mm -hmm. yeah. when you're backstage, when a guy is saying, "Ladies and gentlemen, Roseanne Barr, or Lady, yeah. Lady Gem and Tom Arnold," do you know they're gonna laugh? Do you no. know? Do you know before you step out? Oh no, not at you all. Don't uh, know uh, no, you never know. That's what's so awesome about doing it. It's like getting out there and like, it's like right. being Mike Tyson, you know, yeah. and the Will audience. Will they give and, you the first minute? Bob Hope yeah. used to say, they'll, they'll, if you're famous, you the they'll give you that's the first minute. That's true, they will. Yeah, Visually. that's true. Yeah, I think, it's, uh, I, with me, it's a little different. I think they're looking at me. They don't give him the first minute. They, they're looking no. at me wondering what is, you know, it, it, you know, they're just kind of wondering what's, they don't know anything about me. They just know what they read, some stuff. And, you know, he, how can he be funny if he's with her and she's funny? I mean, two funny people are certainly not going to be married. But he did great. And, you and know, so you got. The reviews are good. You got really, great reviews. Yeah. Yeah. People like Do you, you know once guys. they start laughing yeah. that no. you have them? No, your oh, option I... is up for renewal after every joke. Oh, come on. It's true, Larry. You could tell like five killer jokes, huh, honey? And well, then you tell one and you mess up the wording because I'm dyslexic. That's true. And I mess up words a lot. And, and I'll do that, and then it'll take me three more jokes to get them back up. That's how it is for all of us. But it's not every crowd. Sometimes you'll get a place like we're in Des Moines, and uh, you know she's got a lot of fans there, and they laugh no matter what she said. Everything yeah, was a big. True. But then in, you know, in different places, Vegas are a little more critical because they're you know they're there to gamble basically. And they're also maybe losing. Yeah. Yeah. In Vegas are. But I don't think they come to see you there yeah, at the know. casinos. They're you're just the show. But I guess when they come to see you, then and they the, give no, you more. They're in Des Moines, and they've paid 15 bucks. Yeah. 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 That's a testimonial when they laugh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to take show. a break, come back, and take your phone calls. For the couple of the year, Tom Arnold <laughs> and Roseanne Barr, the Arnolds. An hour with the Arnolds in Los Angeles. <laughs> Just backdoor folk doing what you do. Make it a lot more money, but what the hell. We'll be back after this. <laughs> My parents got divorced, too, when I was a kid, and uh, it was kind of fun because we got to go to divorce court with them. And uh, it's like a game show. My mom won a house and a car. We're all excited, you know. <laughs> My dad got some luggage. Uh. It's 26 past the hour. Good morning. I'm Dave Walker in Atlanta with a brief look at the news. The fallout appears to be hitting Louisiana from its lawmakers' attempts to impose the nation's toughest anti-abortion law. Democratic Party sources say the party has decided not to hold their 1992 convention in New Orleans because of the anti-abortion stance. The sources say New York was chosen instead. Also, the woman involved in the Roe versus Wade decision is threatening a tourism boycott against Louisiana. Norma McCorvey was Jane Roe in the 1973 ruling legalizing abortion. She joined with women's rights lawyer Gloria Allred to urge Governor Buddy Romer to veto the bill. We believe that Louisiana's efforts are clearly unconstitutional and in violation of Roe versus Wade, which struck down a law passed by the state of Texas, which made abortion a crime. In addition, Ms. Rowe and I will help to organize what she calls a woman cot of Louisiana and urge all businesses to refuse to hold conventions in Louisiana. In Baton Rouge, Romer says he's looking at the constitutional issues before deciding on a veto. The latest version would outlaw all abortions except to save a woman's life in cases of incest and with certain conditions rape. Japan is saying it plans to resume its loans to China. Japanese officials say Prime Minister Toshiki Kaifu gave the word to his summit partners at the economic summit in Houston. Toshiki Kaifu said Japan can't break its promise to extend $5.6 billion in loans. The money has been frozen since the crackdown on pro-democracy demonstrators last year. During the summit, the seven Western industrial powers are agreeing to disagree on sending money to bail out the Soviet economy. The seven leaders stepped outside for the cameras before a working dinner last night. As they head for the second day of the meeting, there is no agreement on aid to the Soviets, but the leaders appear willing to let each country go its own way. Nicaraguan President Violeta Chamorro called out the army last night to put down a virtual uprising by Sandinista supporters. Police report at least three people killed, ten wounded in fighting between Sandinista sympathizers and government supporters. 
The violence comes amid a general strike that has thrown the country into chaos. Chamorro accuses the Sandinistas of stirring up the strike in unrest. Former President Daniel Ortega is urging Chamorro to negotiate. The U.S. is offering to release a Fidel Castro opponent convicted of terrorism if the prisoner will accept house arrest. Cuban Orlando Bosch has been behind bars since he illegally entered the U.S. in 1988. He was convicted of terrorism in 1968 for shooting a bazooka at a ship in Miami. He was jailed in Venezuela in the bombing of a Cuban airliner but was found innocent in three trials. The U.S. has tried to deport Bosch, but 31 countries have refused to take him. That's a quick update. I'm Dave Walker. Hugh, let's not mess with me today, okay? I'm robbing the bank. What the hell kind of clown are you? The crying on the inside kind, I guess. <laughs> What are the critics saying about this year's summer reading program sponsored by the Allen County Public Library and all its branches? It's the best thing since summer camp. You should sign up beginning May 29th to get in on all the excitement. I've never had so much fun in the library. Pre-readers and readers in grades K through 12 can enjoy the summer reading program. The fun begins June 4th. It doesn't stop until July 27th. Explore New Worlds will be going on at a library near you. It's festival time, Three Rivers festival time. Aren't you glad that it's here, the wonderful time of the year, when the city really stands up and shines? So get in on the fun, show them your style. Hundreds of events that'll make you smile, aren't you glad? It's Three Rivers festival time. Woo! There are over 275 events to choose from at the 22nd annual Three Rivers Festival, July 7th through the 15th. Celebrating 10 years of growth, this is CNN. Why are the <laughs> uh, During this break, Roseanne Barr fired three people working <laughs> on but hired two homeless people to work on staff and made your money, right? So yeah. she, there's a lot of good, a lot of bad. Yeah, a lot of good. And a puppy. Uh, so and a puppy. Yeah. Uh, our phone numbers, if you want to talk to the Arnolds, are 213-469-5533. I did kind of hire a homeless guy. Yeah, so, I did. We're on. 213-469-5533. Uh, sorry, you actually said you're sorry to me. I'm humbled by that. <laughs> okay. Uh, our guests are Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold. Let's cover some quick bases and okay. then go to your phone calls. What started the feud between you and Arsenio Hall? Well, it, it just is like uh, repugnant fat jokes that aren't even jokes. And, you know, we just got sick of them. I couldn't believe it because, you know, we were watching them and, we, and I thought I always was like Arsenio's friend and everything. Have you gone on that No, just not just because I didn't have time. But, like, I'm the one that told him to do it. I mean, I, not that he took my advice, but, I mean, I knew him before and everything. And it turned on one night, and there he is, and this is what he said. Can you imagine when Roseanne Barr at night, she takes off her bra and all that fat just... <laughs> it wasn't... There was no joke on it. It was insulting. It was stupid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess most of all, it just wasn't funny. And I didn't understand that. And that's what started it. Because I went, man. A series of those type of jokes. And it was like over and over and over. Then, then, no, then we called him repeatedly and asked him to stop it. Oh, he started doing it more. Yeah. He started doing Roseanne Barr jokes or mm -hmm. fat jokes? Roseanne, Roseanne Barr, Barr fat, fat jokes. jokes. Combination of the two. Okay. Yes, and but they did. weren't jokes. I hate to call them fat jokes because I can take a fat joke. Mm -hmm. He didn't take your call? Uh, no. Then why no. not talk to you? He no. didn't speak to you no. at all? No. He would go on TV and like bait Tom, you know, and go, come on down here, buddy, and then, and then and I went say down he was there. gonna leave him some passes. So, t so then when Tom would go down, they'd go, we didn't, leave, we didn't say anything. Well, we had it on tape that he said on his show in his monologue. Yeah, And, and so then when Tom would go down there, you know, he'd, he'd have bodyguards show him in his limo and get out and of now, there. Now, in yeah. the old days, yeah. in the Fred Allen, Jack Benny days, right. yeah. the more caustic press would say, this is a pretty good shtick to tour you got going. Yeah, that's what we sort of figured, too, yeah. but he doesn't, uh, I don't know where his head's at. I really don't. How do you feel about it? Well, I wish wife? I would have, he, you know, I'd like to, you know, I, I don't know, I don't want to say I'd like to punch him out, but, uh, you know, the guy said, come on, you know, he says, it looks at the camera and says, come on down here. So I go down there, and his bodyguards, he's hiding out from me. 
Because he's done it twice. He's hit out twice. Yeah, he did do it twice. I've been down there twice. Bodyguards. And he's hit out yes. behind his bodyguards and, and, and behind these women. This he is says, all, I come down and we'll talk about it. And so he goes all the way down there from Malibu. And then they don't let him I took a film game. crew the second time. So I have it on uh, videotape. I went down there and he, he sent out a word that kings only meet with kings, he said. You know, and uh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> but, so, uh, you know. But, but that was... It's, there's something goofy with them to do that kind of thing, yeah. I guess. And you know him a long time, right? Not a long time, but me and him used to both have stage fright and go out of the comedy store and do tag team. I'd do ten, he'd stand by the mm -hmm. side, then he'd go out and do ten, I'd stand by the side on stage because we were both had stage fright this one year. And, you know, I, I thought you we were... You were buddies. So they I were thought friends. We were That's friends. what's bad is they're like friends and we're all comics, uh. but... You know him? Do, do, do. Well, I know who he is. I mean, you know, I know. How do you her. figure it? How do you explain it to yourself then? I well, don't I think when you go out, on, well, I think when you have to, maybe when you have to do a monologue every night and you have to fill five minutes and you don't have any jokes, maybe that's where it comes from uh -huh. because, you know, I, I can't think of any other thing. I know what that's like, though, to have to make <laughs> stuff up. But yeah. For, for uh, Tom Arnold and, and Roseanne Barr, Burbank, California. Hello. Hi, my name is Kathy. Oh, this is weird listening to myself. Uh, anyways, um, I was wondering because I'm one of those people that reads this tabloid, uh -huh. <laughs> and I've seen like pictures in there of your kids like flipping off, you mm -hmm. know, the press and the uh -huh. photographers. I mean, how do you feel about this? They seem pretty young to be doing things like that. Well, you know, they're not young enough to. Uh, they're not too young to be assaulted by hordes of people. I mean, why shouldn't they do that? Yeah. Uh, what were they doing? I don't understand. They flip the, the bird to the photographers because, you know, like they trap my kids. Uh, you How know, old they are trap the kids? them. They're 13, uh, 14, They're 15, 15. Yeah, 14 and that 12. That surprises you that people 13, 14, and 15 would give the bird to someone, call her? 13? That's yeah. kind of young. I mean, what kind of example is that? Well, once I saw the kids do it, I started doing it myself. So they set a pretty good example for us. I mean, if they bust in on your privacy, yeah. how would you act? That was at our wedding yeah. that oh. they were doing it, where they were yeah. sneaking, you know. Some people won't ever understand, so it's best to not talk about it. Yeah, it's kind of sad, though. Yeah. Don't you it's think it's sad. sad? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's sad. It's sad that they have to go through, the kids have to go through You it. were bothered by it, Kathy? Was I bothered by it? Yeah, by, I mean, the third Yeah, because, you know, I really thought it was, like, low class, and, um, well, people like that deserve to have the press after them. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, you keep reading those tabloids. <laughs> yeah. So what, what Have you, you ever thought of suing them like Cal Burnett? Well, we did think of it, but then we figured, well, we can't control it. It's, like, a lot of years and a lot of money, and then I think maybe it gives them more, uh, you know, it gives them more... So it sells more magazines. Yeah. Was, not that's true anyway in there, so people that buy them, you're wasting your money. Do you yeah. two try to lead a normal life? Like, do you go yeah. out to dinner? We do lead a normal life. Go to Italian restaurants, absolutely. order pizza, have a mm -hmm. pasta? Absolutely. We go to movies, we take the kids to sporting events, we do everything that everybody else does. And I insist on it because, I, I mean, it's got to be. The, kid, the kids, you know, their environment, that does mean a lot to us. We have to let... We don't want them to be afraid to, you know, to go out. I because mean, uh, it was that way for a long time. You know, your kids do get an attitude. They get the bigger in restaurants you know, and stuff. You know, I mean, the kids get an attitude when you have people running at you and taking your right. pictures and stuff. But Santa Monica, California. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi, Roseanne. Hi. Um, I live in Santa Monica. I wanted to know if you guys would come over for dinner sometime. All right. Where do you live? What? <laughs> All right, where do you live? I live in Santa Monica. Oh. In the address. <laughs> <laughs> you drop us a note and we'll forward it to them. Yeah, sure. That's nice of you to ask. Can we address right now? Can we bring no, no, no. the kids? Send can it bring to the, us. Can they bring got... the kids? <laughs> what? Can they bring the kids? Sure. If they, uh, if they don't like... like the food, they'll flip you the bird. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that was nice of her. Right, us and we'll go. <laughs> Well, okay. no. Listen, that's a new bit. The Arnolds have changed. <laughs> Marriage has changed them completely. They now accept dates at either the Spectrum in Philadelphia or your home. One or the other. They work no middle houses. Tell about Iowa. We went. We went. Oh, we were in Iowa. Tell them where he's from. And we went door to door asking people if they had any pie. This is when we still ate. You know, we show you eat pie. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Uh, they all did. We went in everyone's house and had a whole bunch of pie all weekend. It was real It cool. was great. Just any strangers. I didn't even know That's them. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah it works. It was fun. It was good pie. We'll be right back with Tom Arnold and Roseanne Barr. More of your phone calls. Don't go away. Stop that pig meat, cover hog. Cover hog? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right. 
we missing an offspring? Yeah, where do you think I got the bacon? I'm using this other long-distance company. Try to call Phoenix? I misdialed Fiji. Well, let me knock a I call the operator. She says she can't give me instant credit. I say AT&T always did. She says, you're not dealing with AT&T. If you miss dealing with AT&T, it's easier than ever to come back. Just call 1-800-622-3900 right now, and we'll switch you back for free. They kept saying how much money I'd save. Then I get the first bill. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I thought it was a typo. I mean, where were the big savings? People who thought they could do better than AT&T are coming back for the real value. You can too. It's simple. Just call now and come back for free. Takes longer getting through, but I'm saving a ton, right? Wrong. You gotta read the fine print. Well, not be I couldn't believe it. You're not dealing with AT&T. Oh, I am now. 1-800-622-3900 for dependable, crystal clear AT&T long distance service. Call now and we'll switch you for free. You couldn't pick a better time to come back. A new foundation for freedom is changing the face of Eastern Europe. Now, as the pace of progress cracks the Eastern Bloc, CNN opens a bureau in the city where it all began, Berlin. The Berlin Bureau covers history in the making, only on CNN. His people at the moment, and they'll speak to All these evening news programs are the same, right? Wrong. Only one gives you a full hour of coverage. Only one is part of the network judged the most believable on television. Only one is backed by the largest TV news gathering organization in America. And only one has Bernard Shaw and Catherine Pryor. The World Today, weeknights at 6 Eastern on CNN. Our guests are Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold. Tomorrow night, Matthew Broderick and Ali Sheedy. Maybe they'll get together. We'll have the Brodericks <laughs> at home and they'll be over. Okay. Chicago, hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. <laughs> I think you're both really talented people. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's nice. I want to know, Roseanne, how much of your show do you use uh, the script very closely or do you improv at all or is that is it pretty closely to the script uh, the script is pretty much the skeleton it depends on how good it is and how many laughs it has in it you know really but pretty much the skeleton and you know while we're working or something we'll go wait a minute try this and a lot of it is improv that makes it into the script from the actors and also like every day I go with the, you know, I'm also, I, one thing I have to say about me is that I also always have been a writer on the show, even though I didn't take a writer's credit. But, you know, every night after the show, I pretty much figure out what works and what doesn't. We retire back with the writers and do more writing like that. So, you know, it, a lot of it comes out of improv and a lot of it comes from, you know, sitting down and hammering mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you measure as you go along, you'll write, you'll change things. Mm -hmm. Doing the show. Yeah. They read the script on Monday, and then right after they read it, all the actors, they go and she makes changes, and then they come back and either, you know, if there's a lot of changes, they don't rehearse Monday, yeah. but and then they come they back Tuesday, and they tape on Friday. Yeah. So like, they have, during the week, it's, it, you know, it changes a little okay. bit. Okay. Uh, how do you respond? Uh, you discussed Arsenio Hall doing things about fat people. Didn't you have a problem with gay groups? Mad at you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you, do you uh, regret I, what you said? Well, uh... I regret that what I said hurt anybody. Yeah, I do, and I and I promise that I would not say that word anymore. But when I said it, I wasn't meaning it as an attack on a group. I was meaning it as a, as a as an attack on a stereotype, and it kind of got turned around. But no matter what, you know, no, I won't say it again because it hurt people. Yeah. What do you think of Andrew Dice Clay? I think he's a he's a you know I, I think there's a big fuss about him. He's just a comedian, you know. I mean, uh, he's not the best comedian either. I think it's. Uh, you know, I think I think if his character was taken a little bit farther out on a limb, that he'd be really funny, because he'd Me, be so, so mocking, so self mocking. Because he is funny then. Well, I mean, yeah, I think he probably. But you mean he won't stretch it. Well, he just keeps it like a like a, he keeps it. If if he would go a little bit further to make that character, to really show what's underneath that character, yeah. that, that all the stuff that makes somebody say those kind of things. Like Archie those Bunker, kind of you know, you looked at that character and you, you know, you and knew it wasn't him. offensive, uh, yeah. although he said many of the same things. But there was some kind of vulnerability and some kind of truth underneath it. But just to stand there and say poo-poo words, isn't that funny? Right. But today on CNN, he, maybe the reason for that is he said that that's just shtick to him. That yeah. just happens mm -hmm. to be the bit he chooses to use, yeah. and that that isn't him. Well, maybe that's why it's, you know, not that funny. Do you think that kind of thing is short-lived? Yeah. Do. Union, New Jersey. Hello. 
Uh, good evening, Larry. Good evening, hi. Roseanne. Hi. Roseanne, based you're on your... You're not going to say good evening to Tom. Tom. Say, say hi to Tom. Tom. Hi, Tom. How are you? Okay. Uh, what? About the She-Devil? Roseanne, based on your experience from She-Devil, uh -huh. I'd like to know if you consider making another movie again and if you would consider making it in New York. Uh, yeah, I definitely would, sure. Even though the movie didn't do well? Yeah. Did you take that personally when it didn't do well? Um, well, I took it personally when I felt like... No, I guess I didn't take it personally, but it was like a lot of stuff was written that I should have taken it personally, but basically I just had a small part in a, in a Meryl Streep movie. All right, and it you just know? didn't do well. Yeah. Some do, some don't. And I, don't, I didn't think that my best work made it to the film, but that's what everyone says. So yeah. You're going to be the voice the of the thing. baby girl and look who's talking to? Yeah. Yeah, it's only four days worth of work. So, so it's all, it's it's all read over, cool. right? It's yeah. easy. I did that yeah. today for The Simpsons. That's a joke. You stand in, you read, right? Yeah. I mean, it's fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. So you're going to be a baby girl. What kind mm -hmm. of voice are you going to take? I don't know yet. I'll do whatever they tell me to do. What if you don't like the script? Um, I think that there's a lot of improv in the this one because, like, I think they have to, like, first they look at the baby's face and maybe they make up stuff to go with it, which I'm good at. So maybe it won't be like, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't think she'll be standing there telling me, to have my voice go down at the end. You'll you know? use your own voice. Yeah, I'll this. use my yeah. own voice. Or you'll just speak yeah. as if you yeah. were like an adult. You're not going to... Oh, you mean am I going to sound like a baby? Yeah. Nah. No. Nah, no. you'll just talk like you are. Yeah. Just whine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at that look. Look at that look she gave you back. Honey. <laughs> DeVille, Louisiana. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, finally got through. I had to herd all the kids into one room. <laughs> Lock no. the door. I, uh, I wanted to know how... how you felt, Roseanne, when that story came out about the adoption mess. And one thing I'd like to know is how did they get the information? Well, how they told me well, how they got it was they paid off somebody, and it apparently it had to be somebody real high up in the Denver um, record place, or, you know, the government, records or whatever. like a judge or somebody to get it. You found out that what? Well, you know, I guess I wasn't... I don't read the text. Oh, I wasn't that upset that, you know, someone found out that I'd had a baby and gave it up for adoption. I, I always knew that would come. But what I was upset about is that they knew where her address was, her phone number, what school she went to now, and I didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. So that was what was By upsetting. the way, what, in your opinion, are the career effects of these things? When that's printed, do ratings go down? Do bookings get less? Do you, what's the effect? Uh, what's the quid pro quo? I think ratings, are prob unfortunately, I think they go up. I think they, uh, you know... As you become more of a... Fortunately, say. Yeah, but they I mean... But it's unfortunate that a negative thing bring, breeds positive. Because... But it's what they say to spell your name right, but... Yeah. But I, I I have to say that, like, the, uh, a really great thing happened because of that, despite all the stuff mm -hmm. that I went through to get that information from those scummy people who had it and try to get to her and her mother before they found her. Um, you know, w w we have a relationship now, and, you know, we've, um, we've been talking, and she came out to She's visit great. and meet She's the great. kids, and... And that just makes it all worth it. doesn't mm -hmm. matter. We'll be right back with uh, Tom Arnold and Roseanne Barr. Matthew Broderick tomorrow night. Bill Murray on Wednesday. Oh. This is Larry King Live. Don't go oh, away. Bill Murray. Yeah. That's Frank. How dare they? <laughs> I guess they didn't shrink. I just grew. I think we've grown together. Oh. <laughs> We gotta go on a diet. What's this wee jazz? My pants fit fine. <laughs> Just in time for dinner. Whoops. Hey, wait a minute. No stain. Can this be magic? It's DD Guard with Fiber Lock from the makers of DD7. Watch this test. Pour red dye across this fabric. The untreated side stains. The protected side beads and runs away. Here's how it works. DD Guard's secret Fiber Lock formula penetrates deep into the core of each and every fiber. Sealing, locking out dirt, and stains. DD Guard effectively locks out stains on carpets, clothing, upholstery, and curtains. Two identical silk ties, but iodine soon shows which one is protected. More proof? We'll place this tissue over a glass. Add wine. The tissue soaks it up and disintegrates. Another tissue. Spray with DD Guard. Let dry. Now the wine won't penetrate or stain. And here's the tissue, like new. DD Guard with Fiber Lock can be yours on this special television offer for only $14.95. Enough to protect these drapes, this chair, two suits, a dress, one of these, some of those, and a whole lot of other things. Or let us give you a second bottle for $5 more. That's two bottles for $19.95. Double the protection. Only DD Guard can change this to this. Have your credit card ready. Here's how to order.
Call toll-free 1-800-826-5600. That's 1-800-826-5600. Or send $14.95 for one bottle or save $10 by sending $19.95 for two bottles plus $4 shipping to D.D. Guard, P.O. Box 8989-B, Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Jane Pauley will be with us, by the way, on uh, Friday night. Next week, Monday and Tuesday night, in advance of the Goodwill Games, this program, Larry King Live, will come to you from Seattle. John Goodman will be with us next Wednesday, and Kirk Douglas next Thursday. Starting Friday, the 20th, I'm going to be anchoring the Goodwill Games from Seattle on TBS, but we're going to show you some highlight shows, and some guest hosts, and some pre-tape shows, so you'll still be seeing a lot of me. Don't lose faith. Greensboro, North Carolina, with Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold. Hello. Hi, my name is Suzanne. Hello, Roseanne and Tom. Hi. I like and respect both of you, and my question is for Roseanne. Now that you're on television during the so-called family viewing primetime hours, do you still use the four-letter words that you used in some of your acts, the ones I've just seen on television through the years? I was just wondering about that, or if there's been pressure from the network to change that. Well, I don't use it on TV because, you know, it's primetime network yeah. TV, so no, I don't use any of those four-letter words there because, you know, there's such a thing as venue. No, but she saw it's separate, though. She saw your live act. to see, it's separate. Oh, no, if I'm doing a nightclub act, I'm more salty. Yeah, because yeah. that's uh, part of the act. Don't talk into that. This is... Oh. Yeah, you don't. Know, oh. Tom has the direction. You talk, they don't hear you. Oh. Just look at me. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Over there. Hi, San Diego. Hello. <laughs> Oh. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for the opportunity. I think you both are just the neatest people. Oh, that's I nice. want to know what you Very think nice. of Two Live Crew and the recent uprising of censorship. And also, if you're ever in San Diego, would you like to come party down in Mexico with the pro? Why not, honey? Why not? Go to All right, listen. Write us a note. Give us your address. Sure. They'll pick you up. Drive down. You got kids? No, no. No kids. Uh, you know, we, we don't party, but... Uh, they, don't, they don't do that kind of thing. You have yeah, to have kids. Kind of but if you're watching in San Diego and you have children, write to us. We'll get in touch. They'll pick you up. Take you to Mexico. Two live crew. They're opening for Roseanne. Because she needed <laughs> yeah, a, I needed to she clean needed her out. <laughs> off in the show. I, I, I said that out on the East Coast. Yeah, that's funny. Two live crew and Roseanne tonight. <laughs> yeah. right? Censorship is is terrible. We, we both, you know, being comics, you th feel you should say anything you want to say, and, and it's just horrible. Yeah, it's you terrible. should be able to say... Anything you want to Actually, say. when you try but to you say really it, make them more famous. The yeah, truth totally. is that, that you really can't say. The real truth is nobody can really say the stuff they really want to say anywhere. Yeah. Uh, there already is censorship. Sure. So it, it just, Some of it's you know, built it's, into, It doesn't right. bother me that much, actually. You know? In a sense, it's censorship. Yeah. I, mean, I may yeah. want to say something now and blow a career. Right. right. But that's a censorship yeah. of a kind. West Los Angeles, hello. Jan. Hey, Hi, Jen. I'm a little bit chubby myself, and I think you guys are great. Oh, you're oh. nice, thanks. <laughs> Listen, I heard that you were going to take singing lessons, Roseanne. Well, I hardly need them, Jan, but... <laughs> no, I am yeah. going to. I, I have the same guy... The same guy's teaching me as teach... Uh, as taught... Um, Teach. Te I'm teach. just... Uh, I've Madonna. Madonna and Prince. The same guy that taught those yeah. guys is going to teach her. What are you going to sound like? Well, I sound pretty good now. You can sing. I'm singing in my act. Didn't you know that? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, it's all musical now. Well, part of it is musical. Yeah, part of it's musical. You do pop songs? No, I do medleys. Of pop some of, songs. Of so the pop. Wor some of the worst songs ever written. Yeah. Like, what song do you do? Kung Fu Fighting and... Kung Fu Fighting? <laughs> Can you give us a, before the break, a sample of that? <laughs> Should I? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, I, first I do this whole tribute okay. to men, and go. then I go... Uh, and now a song written by a man about men. Everybody wants kung fu fighting. <laughs> we'll be back with uh, Miss Barr and Mr. Arnold <laughs> after this. <laughs> Entertainment Weekly wants to know. Good TV movie. When you go into a video store, there's about 8,000 movies to choose from. I never know what movie to go to. I mean, you want to make a quick decision on going to a movie, and you can't find anywhere where you have a quick source. 
Now there's an exciting new magazine called Entertainment Weekly that's going to solve everybody's problems. It's fresh, it's opinionated, and it's everything you ever wanted to know about entertainment. All in one convenient publication. And if you subscribe now, you'll get the first four issues free. This is exactly what we need to find out what's going on on TV, movies, and books. What stinks, what doesn't stink? It's like ten magazines all in one. It goes from records to video to movies. Now choosing from dozens of movies and TV shows, hundreds of videos and thousands of books and records can be mistake-free. This is great, and it has a quick reference guide to the movies. Call this number. We're so sure you'll love Entertainment Weekly. We'll give you the first four issues free. That's right. The first four issues free. Four free issues. I think it's great. I get four free issues of this? It's fantastic. Four free issues? Four? This is terrific. Order a charter subscription now, and after you get the first four issues free, you'll receive a full year of Entertainment Weekly at the charter subscription price of 99 cents per issue, almost 50% off the cover price. Or if you're not completely satisfied, just cancel and pay nothing. Four free issues I can cancel any time? Four free issues? Oh, I think this is terrific. This is great. I can't believe this. This magazine's wonderful. I love it. Just call this toll-free number to get four free issues. Entertainment Weekly. What's good, what's hot, and what's not. Four free issues and I can cancel any time. Give me to a phone right now! As you watch this, your money is changing hands. To find out how and why, you need the latest business news. At 15 minutes into each half hour, only on Headline News. Hello, everyone. I'm Karen McGinnis at the CNN Center in Atlanta. Tuesday afternoon, another typical summery July afternoon, east and west, but we have a little bit of cooling in between. We've got 100s running up and through the border of California and Oregon for tomorrow afternoon. Plenty of 90s to go around the Pacific Northwest. Idaho Falls, 92. San Francisco, 79. Los Angeles could be approaching that 90-degree mark. Chicago with additional thunderstorms, 76. Miami will see some partly cloudy skies in 92. And if you're headed up to New York, it'll be close to 90 degrees there with hazy, hot, and humid conditions all across the southeast. Now these forecasts for these cities. For a transcript, call 1-900-468-LIVE. You'll be billed $5 on your phone bill. Or send $5 to Journal Graphics, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 1007. Uh, we're back, and we go to uh, Kansas City. We have a minute left. Hello. Right. Hi. I was wondering, are any of your kids interested in going into show business? And if so, would you encourage them or discourage them into proceeding in that sort of career? What was that? Um, well, they're going to do what they want anyway, but uh, I, I just encourage them to, like, do what they want and go for it, you know, but uh, you not, uh, not right now. Way I the other or not they, they have they're real, they're real artistic, creative kids, and, you know, like, uh, one daughter sings, one daughter paints, one daughter writes, and my son wants to make films, so they'll probably end up doing it. Uh, when will we, you next appear together? Uh, I think uh, August 4th in Minneapolis. Yeah. River August 4th. At Riverfest in Minneapolis yeah. with Sinead O'Connor. We're real excited. <laughs> That's fun. And we thank you both. What a great hour. Thank you very one. much, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Good luck to you, too. Tom. Okay, tomorrow night, Matthew Broderick and uh, Ali Sheedy will be with you in one hour. The Larry King Show. Oh, the lovebirds are going to kiss. You show them. Let's show them. They're kissing now. This is, we've got to put up with this. All right, nigga. Ah, oh, and that's sweet. Another evening with the Arnolds. Remember, they'll be at your house tomorrow night. Thanks for joining us. Bye.
Please stand by for an important message for all senior citizens. In November of 1989, the Medicare catastrophic bill was repealed by Congress. Now, many seniors who have Medicare supplement insurance are confused about what their policy will or will not cover. With the government making all these changes, I really don't know how good my coverage is. I was shocked to find out that my rates went up and my benefits went down. The Association of Retired Americans, a nonprofit organization for seniors, is making a free Medicare supplement comparison available to anyone over age 64. This is a free comparison with absolutely no cost or obligation. We want to be sure that we're covered as well as we can be. It's hard to keep up with all the changes in Medicare. An ARA representative will explain how the repeal of the catastrophic bill affects your existing Medicare supplement policy and will compare your policy to others that are available today. Finally, I'll be able to see if my policy is good or not. If I can get better coverage and save money too, I want to know about it. Eliminate the guesswork. Make sure you've got the proper coverage and that you're not paying too much for your coverage. For your free comparison, we urge you to call the toll-free number on your screen. This is a service of the Association of Retired Americans. For your free comparison, with no obligation, call now. Call me now, and I'll make sure you get your free Medicare supplement comparison from the Association of Retired Americans. You owe it to yourself to find out if you've got the proper coverage. Remember, the information is free. And so is the phone call. All you need to do is dial the toll-free number on your screen. Celebrating a decade of achievement, this is CNN. It's 5 a.m. Eastern. Good morning. I'm Dave Walker in Atlanta with a brief look at the news.